resource that we actually did not use, but highly recommend. Totally, you should use it. Look at what we got. We're such bad people. It's her fault though. I love cookie dough that's edible. So this is like a cookie dough ice cream milkshake and then there's like one little cookie dough uh, scoop chilling up here. But we got it just in time. It's actually pouring out right now. So we're just kind of hanging out, waiting for the rain to get better. And I'm gonna just destroy this cookie dough tub. <laughs> hey everyone, welcome to our channel, Match Made in Medicine. This is Amanda. And I'm Viral, and in this video, we're gonna go over how we studied during medical school. This is a continuation from our last video where we go over sort of general tips on how to be successful in medical school. But in this video, we'll show you specific resources that we used and how we use them to do well in medical school. The first resource that we actually did not use, but highly recommend, would be Anki. We started using Anki in our second year, but if you all are just starting medical school, Totally, you should use it. So Anki is basically the flashcard application that is very famous in medical school. It's basically spaced repetition and the algorithm is second to none. It does a very good job of predicting when you're about to forget a card so that you see it just in time to remember it. So Anki was kind of new when we first started medical school and we didn't really have a good grasp of it or know about the benefits of it. So we started using it kind of midway through second year as, as kind of step one preparation. We used the deck Zonki. Later in the year, we also started using the Pepper deck for Sketchy. And now what we recommend is the Anking deck and we can link it in the description. The Anking deck is really just like a compiled deck of Zonki, the Pepper deck for Sketchy, and a few other decks. I mean, I think between Zonki and Pepper deck, you're more than covered. You don't need to do a gazillion cards at all. The way we ended up using the Zonki deck is pretty much doing 25 cards a day in each of the various subjects. For example, I would do 25 cards in biochem, cardiovascular, anatomy, and all the other subsections and keep up with that. Initially, it was manageable, but then the cards do start piling up, but it's not something that's totally undoable. And so if you are first year and you're not really learning the pathology of diseases yet, it might be more helpful just to do like basic science type Anki where maybe you would have physiology, anatomy, biochemistry, do the things that you are learning because it is kind of hard to do Anki on topics that you're completely unaware of. And a lot of people will recommend making your own cards for Anki. We didn't do that. We didn't think it was worthwhile. We instead spend that time kind of just studying together and looking over lecture slides to make sure we did well with lectures. Our school had second year as a graded curriculum, so our grades mattered. So we made sure to kind of study the lecture slides kind of regularly and talk about them daily and go over all the concepts from lectures and that way we didn't have to really worry too much about using Anki towards that. Anki for us was mainly towards preparation for step one. There's always going to be significant overlap between the two. So at the end of the day, it didn't really matter that we didn't use Anki for kind of the in-school lectures and curriculum. So another great resource that we did start using first year of medical school is called OneNote. And this is a program that you can download onto your computer. And so what we did is during the four hours of lecture we had every day, we took those PowerPoints that we would get ahead of time and drop them into our OneNote so that when the lecturer was lecturing, we could just use the OneNote application to highlight specific things that they said were important or write our own text in on the side. It kind of lets you just edit the PowerPoint the way that you want to. And if you have like an iPad or something that's a surface where you can use a pen, you can also write into this area. So we would have all of our notes into OneNote. And then when we would go home and study, we would try to study all of the lectures we had that day so that we were staying on top of the material. And then on Thursday, which was the day before our quizzes, we would go over all that material for the week but we felt like we already had a pretty good concept of everything because we had been keeping on top of it. Yeah, so we would kind of talk to each other about the concepts, ask each other questions, kind of just summarize the key points of all the lectures, and that prepared us pretty well for the quizzes that we would have the next day. Some of the lectures were pretty long, like they could get up to 100 plus slides, and I didn't really feel like going through each slide individually. So I could take OneNote at the end of it and I would just make maybe like a one to two page typed little handout for 
myself so that when I went back and studied, I could really just go through it pretty quickly and hit those high points. And through using OneNote, this is how we both were able to get A's during all of our medical school classes. The way we studied anatomy during first year is primarily by going into the lab and identifying structures and kind of quizzing each other prior to any anatomy practical that we may have. We would get lectured on the certain topic, like whether it's head neck anatomy or abdominal anatomy during the morning. And then later that day, we would go into anatomy lab. We were assigned dissection times. It would be probably a few hours for each group that would dissect a certain area of the body. And then what him and I would do is come back in because we had access to the lab at most of the times during the day. We would usually go at night and spend a few hours going around every body and seeing all the different structures and quizzing each other because everybody was different and this is really how we were able to get across that hump of anatomy and really just learning what is what and studying obviously the bodies that all the students work on is what you need to do because that's the items that will be tagged for the anatomy practical so if you know those well most likely you should do well on the anatomy exam and for some of those structures that were pretty challenging, we like to draw maybe on like a whiteboard or even just on pieces of paper to make sure that we knew what they would look like before going into lab because that definitely helps as well. So like that tricky brachial plexus, we had drawn it all on the paper so that we could go into lab and be like, oh yeah, this looks kind of familiar. We didn't use any specific resources for anatomy to study. Our lectures had pretty much very nice pictures. They were essentially kind of from netters anyway. So we would just plop those into one note, make any notes that we needed to, and kind of take it from there. The days before our practical or quizzes that were anatomy heavy, we used a resource called Michigan Questions. We'll link it in the description and show you. Basically, these are very nice questions that already have either more clinical questions or actually tagged structures that there's images of so you can try to identify it based on what's you know, surrounding the tagged structure. That was definitely additional, good additional practice that we used to kind of prepare for anatomy practicals. Another resource that we kind of did not use, but highly recommend using is Boards and Beyond. But there's a lot of good videos on there that can help summarize what your school lectures about and kind of presents it in a more digestible and more clinically relevant form. I personally do really well by watching videos and trying to learn from the short high yield concepts that are being explained in the video. I think I would have really benefited from that if I used it during first year. We both ended up using a resource called online med ed for third year and clinicals. I think that boards and beyond is essentially more first and second year type resource helps in preparation for step one, but also will do solid for preparing for in school exams. The key resource for second year that you need to use is Pathoma. Our school's curriculum didn't really have a lot of pathology in our first year. And so when we got to second year and did get all of that pathology and learning about disease processes, a great resource for us was Pathoma. So once we got Pathoma, it came with a textbook and then it also has online lectures. And what you do is you listen to the lectures and you have your book out at the same time so you can take little notes in the margins and make sure you're following along and once you get through that then you kind of have this outline of pretty high yield topic material that you can then study for your exams. Yeah so Pathoma is probably the ultimate high yield tool for pathology and kind of more than just pathology. Mm -hmm. The Zonky deck has Pathoma incorporated into it so after you watch the videos kind of read over the notes in the book you can do the cards on it to really memorize all the high yield information that's present in Pathoma. And just a small breakdown, Pathoma typically goes by organ systems. So there'd be cardio, there would be pulmonary, renal. So it's a nice easy way if that's how your school does modules to go through the book. Another thing that was really only in second year of our curriculum was microbiology. But for that, you already know sketchy micro all the way. Sketchy medical is essentially where they show you a nice little picture of a scenario and each of the little items within the picture kind of represent something that you can memorize in medical school. So there's ton of ton of sketches that explain different microbiology, bacteria, viruses, fungi, and also they now have sketchy farm and sketchy path. The sketchy farm was also very useful for me. The fact that we have to memorize so many drugs and mechanisms of actions and side effects, sketchy really helped with that. And the one thing I will say is just watching the sketchy and doing it is not enough. The fact that we incorporated the pepper deck on Anki, which is essentially the sketchy video broken down piece by piece to help you memorize all the various aspects of the sketch that was the ultimate key and actually for our first month maybe we didn't use sketchy for pharmacology 
I regretted it. I mean, going back and then being like, you know, I think we are gonna watch Sketchy, and then seeing how awesome it was to really know all the drugs, all the side effects, it just teaches you everything about it. There's something about seeing a visual representation and putting an additional story with the concept you're trying to learn and just using more of your neuron and making more connections in your brain is how you kind of do the best as far as memorizing. And there's things that I remember to this day because of Sketchy. And I actually use the Sketchy path as well during second year. So it's a little more challenging than I would say the sketchy microbio and also the sketchy pharmacology But if you're a person who's really visual like myself, I think it still helps so much She's just being extra. <laughs> I didn't have time to do all that And so if you guys noticed we left out one big resource and that would be the golden first aid The reason why we don't recommend that you use this early on in medical school Especially first year is because all it does is it lists random facts about diseases and everything you need to know for the board exam but but that doesn't really help teach you anything. In our opinion, first aid is really just a kind of a review resource. Once, you, once you've amassed enough knowledge to kind of go over everything and to review it for step one or two. What we did with first aid is we used it the second half of our second year of medical school. As we were starting to study for step one, we would go through each chapter of first aid and just review it as we were doing other review questions. We'll go into more detail about how we studied for step one, how we used first aid and the various question banks in preparation for our step one exam. And we'll show you our kind of regrets and what we would have done differently, but that's gonna be in a future video. So subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you don't miss that video when it comes out. So in summary, kind of our big resources and how we ended up doing really well in medical school would be Anki, staying organized with OneNote, going into the anatomy lab to study for anatomy, Pathoma for pathology, Sketchy for me for everything, and Boards and Beyond as a light supplement. And when you feel like you're ready, you can open the great first aid. So we hope you found this video helpful. Let us know in the comments what other kind of videos you'd like to see from us, and we'll see you next time.